I know who I am. I know who I am not. I know what I am. I know what I am not. I've died. I've lived. I am a man. A very warm welcome to this year's fourth installation of the E-Lounge. Today, we're very excited to bring you one of South Africa's giants, a stalwart, a living legend in creative and performance arts. Dr. Jerry Mofoking Omaketa, a prolific actor renowned for his roles in films such as Cry the Beloved Country, Lord of War, Mandela and De Klerk, and the 2005 Academy Award winning film Tsotsi, to mention but a few. Ndata Jerry, amongst his other academic achievements, is a Fulbright scholar with a degree in dramatic arts from the University of Vetvatesrand. He holds a master's in fine arts from the Columbia University and an honorary doctorate from the University of Free State. In recognition of his stellar work as an actor, producer, and director, he has, over his illustrious career, been a recipient of various distinguished awards, including a number of golden horns. In his book, on review today, I am a man. Ndata Jerry shares his life's journey with great honesty and humor. He shares his wounds, his victories, and the lessons life has taught him on being a man. Most poignant is that Ndata Jerry does not raise his fist to the world, blaming others for his struggles. Instead, he opens both fists, digs his fingers into his life, and tears from it the opportunities that lead him to happiness and creative success. And finally, to an understanding of his identity as the man he had not previously fully known. Insights and inspirations could stimulate great conversation. The eLounge is one of our knowledge share platforms anchored on our values of learning and leadership. We do hope that you will tune in, engage, and take away the knowledge from this great conversation. And always remember, those who desire to lead should read. Thank you. Okay. The world is full of strange behavior. Every man has to be his own savior. I know I can make it on, on my own if I try. But I'm searching for the spirit of a great heart to stand me by. Underneath the African sky, a great heart to stand me by. Today, we ha we're having an incredible conversation. A conversation that goes into how we, were, we are raised, how to raise our own kids, and how ultimately to be a man. My guest, a man who said, you don't need to try and make it on your own. I will be that spirit and I will be the great heart under the African sky. I will tell my story and in telling my story, I would allow you to be able to one day tell your own story. I wish I could be able to read my guest's uh, full bio, but in its simplicity, a prolific actor, a man who since seeing him in the various episodes of the line, I cannot take that image out of my mind of him being a warlord. But a grand man who's a father, who's a graduate in, in, in fine arts, and he has a master's in fine arts from various from a university overseas, a father, and ultimately a preacher, and somebody who tells the truth about fatherhood and being a father. Dr. Jerry Mufuking Wamakheta. Welcome, sir. Thank you for uh, cutting it short. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we talk about things instead of talking about me. Yes. It's good to be here. Thank you for this platform. Dr. Wamakheta, you wrote the book and the title clearly says, I am a man. Mm -hmm. 
um, from the time I got a copy there in our office, I was intrigued by the title, um, I am a man. Today we get to go into the book. But before we start there, who is Jeremiah Mufuking Wamakhet? I am a Mosoto man. I'm an African who is a husband, a father. I am an incurable artist, and I'm a man of faith. That's the sh capsule in short. But you're also a man from Soweto. Absolutely. Those who know Soweto will know <coughs> there's a street between Hector Peterson Memorial and Orlando West High School. Yeah. That's where the drama of June 16, 1976 happened. My home is house number 8298, Moema Street, that street. That's where I grew up. I, I don't know whether I was born in the hospital and brought home or the nurses <laughs> came and did their midwifery at home, but that's where life started for me. Until then, at the age of around four, I went to live in Lesotho, Otabote. And at the age of 11, I came back. And yeah. Some information, as they say, is location specific. Yeah. Without us describing that space in Orlando West. Yeah. People have no understanding. You know, I, 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 as I read the book, I said, this man, there was no way that he cannot become successful. Like, there is no way. <laughs> he is of a great crop of people. Let's talk about that a bit. You know that, that space, that small space. And even me, I, I discovered new things in this book. This book is incredible, but yeah. we'll talk about the book. Let's describe that space where you grew up. You know, you know the, the, the different streets and the different people who are just from that section. All right. <coughs> when, let, let me take you from Hector Peterson Memorial. Yes. If that is over there to my right, and I'm at my home here, 8298 Moema Street, and uh, Orlando West High School is to your left, I hope that locates you right away. Yes. So if you go out of the gate from my home <clears throat> and turn immediately right, the house next door is Washington Sikolo's house. And, and the gospel messengers, is that what they were called? Yeah. Uh, the, the first, the king's messengers. Yes. The first group to sing Negro spirituals. And, and so that away, and then you turn, continue to go uh, right towards Hector Peterson Memorial. The school to your left is Bele Higher Primary School. Bele was, Ndate Bele was a principal, he was a father, he was a mentor, he was a social worker, he was everything. And thus the school was named after him. Hmm. I went to school with his son, George Bele. And, and, and that's where Hector Peterson came from school. Right next door is the church that we called uh, the, the Anglican Church, yes. where Bishop Desmond Dudu was for a while. And, and, and a little further, at, at this point, the Hector Peterson Memorial is to your right. Yes. A little further, if you jump the street, uh, two, three houses away is the house, yeah, Ndate Walter and Me Albertina Sisulu, which I knew about, but I dared not go anywhere near because I must never become like Walter Sisulu because I'll spend my life on Robben Island and not grow up to be a father and a husband and everything. Then you turn right, and as you turn right, next to Hector Peterson Memorial is Uncle Tom's Hall, yes. where I started watching Gibson Kenter's plays. And that's where my appetite for theater started, starting with Sicalo, Lifa, Zui, how long, 
and, and, and all those other plays. But a little further, when you go down and turn left, you'll find Abigail Kubeka's house, just to the left in Pumulo. Mm. But right opposite the Orlando, uh, uh, Andrew Tom's Hall, is Ndate Mutuping's house, one of the stalwarts of the PAC. So at this point, you're one street away from my home. You continue in that street, the house at the corner is Ndate Dube's house, who was also a member of the King's Messengers, the Seventh-day Adventist guys. Further on, on the left-hand side is the street caves. That's where Mackay Davash's house was. And, and, and I didn't know about his music. I just heard about it, and I got to appreciate it only after I'd been overseas and so on. And, and then two houses away from Mackay Davash is David Kulwane, the fine artist. Mm. I saw him as a little boy carrying how they carry their works in, in this cloth in thing. Yeah, I just saw... And that's the street. Um, sure. On June 16 or June 17, if you go that street and you go a little further, you'll end up at the clinic. And that's where one of the doctors who wanted to run away after they heard that Soweto is on fire. They, they got him there and they killed him mm. and, 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 and put some papers in his pants and put a pick over his head. And then another one tried to run away and, and I saw this lady picked up by her hair and, and fortunately they continued along Moema Street and there's the Methodist Church. And in the Methodist Church, the preacher rescued mm. that lady and the army came to get her from there so that's that's just those two streets then when you go to the end the street turn left that's Villagas <laughs> street the famous Villagas street and so there is Madiba's house with Mama Winnie people saw it in February when uh, Madiba came out of prison and all those activities that's where it is and then a little further to the right, Desmond Tutu's house. But the school directly opposite, uh, diagonal opposite to Madiba's house, that's Pefeni Secondary School. Yeah. Why is it significant? Uh, across, just a fence across uh, that school is Orlando West High School, where I was in 1976. And people do not understand that there may be just a little education so people understand 76 yes. in context. And, and we're in June now, so maybe one should do that. We were not fighting against Africans. We were fighting against the use of Africans as a tool for enslaving <laughs> us and giving us an education for slavery, for perpetual assistantship. The law, said, what, what was it? Was it Ferbur or one of his predecessors? They say, do not give a black man an education that will promise him greener pasture that he will never taste anyway. When you do so, you frustrate them and they become restless and they could then end up in resistance and kind of things. So the law, the legislation was saying black Black people, three languages, English, Africans, so-called vernacular, mm. home language. But the four content subjects, 50% of them must be taught mm. in, in Africans. Africa. Mm. That was the law. Up to 1975, at Orlando West High School, we did one language, one, one subject in Africans. The other three we did in English. When Menier Mpulo came from Orlando West High School to go and become the principal of Pefeni Secondary School. They then wanted to force him to abide by that regulation, by that legislation. That's when the students rebelled and said, no, you can't. And then they came to ask for help, but we didn't help them. 
And then Morris Isaacson came to help these uh, struggling okay. students, but they must first discipline us for being big brother who's not helping the little brother. Thus, the activity started at our school. And on June 16, 1976, I was writing an African's exam. And <laughs> that's what happened. How profound. Yeah. Let's not get the timeline to step, because you, in the book, you do correct the timeline there. Yeah. Because two years before that, you were a school leaver. I got school leaving. You got school leaving. Yes. And two years later, and, and I want to get to this thing. You've always been driven, even under the apartheid laws and everything else. You recognize that a man cannot continue under these circumstances. I need to do something out of it. Yeah. And, 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 and then we will get into it and roll back the timeline right up to from when you were born and, and dealing with all the other issues that are there. But let's explain what you were doing there because you had left school two years before that. Because it's an important lesson. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people out there who think, my life is finished. I didn't yeah. get my metric and... Okay. In 1974, I write metric. I get a school living. What is school living? You have attempted metric. You have not passed metric. So you can go into the industry and become an assistant to white people forever. You must never have any aspirations besides or above being that assistant. You are a thinking and a, a, an assistant who can speak English and Africans properly. You've done your science and whatever, so you could be taught even in the laboratory, but you have that ceiling. And, and so, please understand that we had, yeah, I, 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 the ceiling was just here. Mm. It was just here. And really, I was, I was getting frustrated. So, I just don't know. Bantu mail clock? for the rest of my life, and I must wait for a gold watch after working for the same company 30 years? Never. Not me. So I go back to uh, 75, I go and work there. 76, I go back to the things I do me, the late things I do me, the principal, and I say, Daddy, I, 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 I know it was two years back when I was here, but please allow me to come and repeat my trick. And he says, no, but... You know, Jerry, you have rusted. You have rusted. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, no, but, but, but. And, and thank God that man gave me a chance. I took the, I, I went there myself. I didn't got my parents. Or, and, 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 and so, to, to, to the young people out there, ask the 1976 generation, even before and maybe a little after, our problem with today's young people is a lack of hunger. A total dissatisfaction with mediocrity. And, and until you yourself are completely dissatisfied with mediocrity and you run on this whole thing, pass one, pass all, forget it. And I, I don't need to be a coach. Yes, I'm a coach, but I don't need to be a coach to let people realize that. 76, we revolted because we did not want to be assistants forever. And having failed metric, I decided, me, that it is not enough to have attempted metric. And so failure is not final unless you make it final. Dr. Mahat, here am I sitting here. I've read the book. Yeah. I know the story. It's not as simple as that. So we got to roll right back to when you were born. Yeah. Because those circumstances are saying to me, or a lot of these youngsters today, they view their circumstances and they view it as a death sentence. Mm -hmm. And we need to tell that story, the story of 
when we were born, and ultimately uh, that day in 1976. Because that day in 1976 doesn't show up yeah. just like that. Yeah. Th there is a man who comes up through a lot of adversities. For those, <laughs> for those who are believers, I, I, I just need to say this so that they understand. Jeremiah chapter 1 talks about Jeremiah. Uh, he, God, God had a plan for him. God says, before you were conceived, I knew you. And I consecrated. What does consecrated mean? You set aside for an honorable mission. Before you are born, be, before you are conceived, before your mother and your father meet, God knows you. And then, before you are born, he has set you apart. Which means, each and every one of us, you have a role to play in this world in your lifetime. In your lifetime. There are millionaires and billionaires who want to have children, who cannot have children. So, Ndatemacheta, who is a married man, mm. and Mrs. Umfukeng, a married woman, meet, and I'm conceived by two people who should not conceive a child. And I'm conceived. Up to this day, I thank my mother for not aborting me. I, I don't know, I don't know how many people have not seen the light of day because of the insult and the injury and the abuse and everything that was due to be held at their mother for having conceived them. So I'm conceived and I'm born in this family. I am told my grandfather says to Ndatem Fuking, my wife, my mother's husband, mm -hmm. things like this that they happen. So this daughter of in law of mine, she's gonna stay here. She's gonna die in this house. So I grew up and lived in that house for four years until my grandfather, when he went on pension, he takes me along to Lesotho, and I live there for seven years. So, Baba Ngadaba Nkutuwa Kiwa Soto, but Oli Shano Mano, 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 Oli but today, yeah, I guess I'm one of the ambassadors of the Lesotho language. We'll get to the seven years, the seven years of you being in Lesotho. Mm. We need to celebrate the first man in your life who makes decisions, decisions that today uh, men are afraid to make. Mm -hmm. Your grandfather. My grandfather. The Demufugi. Tapole Pietras Munyokor. Yes. That man, I'm told, I'm told he was already in Lesotho and he came and then they took me into the bedroom. Yes. There is a way of doing a paternity test. Yes. I, 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 somebody was telling me, let me not mention their names, uh, um, when he was born, the father was in exile mm. already, and he came back, and they haven't had quite a close relationship. And one day, the father came to his house and said, uh, where are the kids? Uh, bring them here. Take off their shoes. Mm. Says, yeah, these are my grandchildren. Mm. Finish. These are my, my grandchildren. grandchildren. Mm. And, 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 and uh, if there are people out there watching who know exactly the science. how <laughs> this science works, please add, come and tell me so that I can educate other people. But when they came out of that bedroom, 
my grandfather made a decision. I was going to be raised in that house despite what who I was. Yes. Now, that's, that's an important decision because fatherhood is, or being a man, you know, it's, it, it, it's a combination of factors. Yes. There are men who make those decisions. They might make them not out of the same circumstances, mm -hmm. but they make them. They say, yes. you know, I am marrying this man, but I'm marrying her knowing that una lebana. Yes. And I am taking those kids as mine. Yes. And I will raise them as such. And yes. those men should be celebrated. Yes, sir. And, 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 and the old men that raise those men should also be celebrated. Because yes. that is important. Yes. And it's an important part of our culture that is fading away. Yes. We, 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 are, we so scorn the, the, what do they call it? The, or we value people's uh, uh, opinion so much that we've given up on being just responsible to raise a human being. It's a, it's a, it's a problem. Um, yeah, maybe we'll discuss it later. Yes. But who corrects a black man? Who calls him to order when he's completely out of step? Completely out of step. And 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 and, and like, I didn't want to go into GBV too much, but yes. it is, my belief is that we have a lot of wounded tigers out there. These men don't necessarily always decide, necessarily always decide to be uh, wife beaters and child abusers and what have you. There's a wound in there that somehow spurs them on. And, and, and having gone to that point, when they are completely off the radar, mm. there isn't a system, there isn't an ethos, there isn't a value that gives us the permission to sit him down and call him to order and discipline him. And so especially when they are successful, especially when they've got money, especially mm. when they are successful and famous, somehow you get away with murder. And so I'm a counselor. I deal a lot with women who, who are beaten up, who are abused, who are insulted, who are cheated on by their husbands, and nobody, nobody is calling them to order. But they don't forget. I still want to go back to the seven years in Lesotho. Yeah. The seven years in Lesotho was difficult. Ah, um, that too. It, it, it's, oh. it, it was difficult. You know, one of my guests says there are things I don't eat uh, because of when I was growing up, that was the thing that was staple to me. Um, but you, you go to Lesotho, you yeah. become a head of cattle and goats. Yes. Your grandfather passes away. Yes. But you yes. still come out like this. And let's have that conversation about, you know, that period so that people understand the context of what you're talking about. We're not just talking about simple, you know, difficulty, it's abuse, it's everything else that went into it. And at the hands of those who you trusted as family, I think my grandmother knew that I was an illegitimate child. She had no place for me in the house. And so one day my mother sends me, I think it was a pillow or something, mm. and she takes it and gives it to my cousin, the daughter's child. And I rebelled that tiny age. And she spit in my face. And, and, and it's etched in there. Lord, forgive her. She knew no better. Mm. She knew no better. So then to go to school, Three or two days, I go and head cattle. Two or three days, I go to school. 
and I still have to pass like somebody who goes to school five days every day. And then the old man is late. There is no provider. There is no protection either. There's no protection either. Uh, my grandfather passes away 1964, and Ndadem passes away 1964. So both households, there is no provider. I know hunger. You want to know hunger? I know hunger. When you've had it two days, the Bible says when a child asks for your bread, will you give them a rock? Papa Yamabele is a rock. And I had to eat that. And to give it a little bit of life, take green onions with rough salt mm. and wholesome margarine. Yeah. That is a full meal. And you're not going to cook for three, four days. That's all you have to live on. I know hunger. I know what it's like in winter. And you, those goats, goats in that day, they go to turfs that you just think, really, in, in your sober mind, why do you get to such difficult? And you have to throw stones. And then they go across the river. Mm -hmm. And you're going across the river barefoot. And, and, and you've got scars mm. on your legs, on your feet, and there's blood coming out. And there is just no Vaseline to find anywhere. And you, wababaela, how am I? So those years were difficult. I remember I, I had an ailment, I can't remember what they call it, where... Belhazia. Belhazia. Yeah. You, you've, got, you've, you've got blood coming out because you drink blood, water that is not refined. And, and, and so then you have to wait for those two, three days until they find a little bit of money and you go to a doctor uh, two hours away because there's only one bus and you must catch that bus to come back. Otherwise, you don't know you're going to sleep at the bus stop. That's the seven years my existence in this suit, in short. In short. And then there's one of your cousins, Dabule, who just would just deal with you all the time. Everybody who's read this book, Dabule is <laughs> the hero. <laughs> and a man who was named after your grandfather. Yeah. Now, now here's the thing. I, we, we haven't yet talked about I am a, a man. Yeah, yeah. A man. According to Dabule, for him to raise a man out of me, he must beat me up as much as he can out there in the field. A cow falls into the river mm -hmm. and, and it can't get itself out. And he gets his friends and other people to come and pull it out. And then we are made to take off our pants and the Roemir, what, what's the English word for Roemir? Oh, but anyway, you have to sleep on top of those red ants uh, without pants on. And so those ants just bite. And, and, and it's, they bite at your private parts, at your thighs, at your buttocks. And then he takes this willow tree uh, and, and, and they, they, they sort of weave it. Mm. And they just wallop you. Anyone of us who cries, they take all the other kids away. They will beat you up until you're quiet. And so you learn at the age of eight, nine, ten, to stand pain. That's the double way. Now you go home and tell. At home, they can't do anything. And besides, you get beaten for telling. So, Dapule, I had a wish. I was planning to go to Gauteng and get a knife that is sharp this side and this side. So when I go and knife 
Tapula, I don't miss him. Mm. Thank God I never went back to Lesotho. <laughs> <laughs> then your mother sends for you. Yeah. Since your older brother to come and collect you, and... 1966. You're back in Gauteng. Yeah. Yeah. Just in time, before you had killed Kapule. Kapule. <laughs> no, no, I was going to get a knife in Gauteng. In Gauteng. <laughs> then come back. Yes. But, yeah, so 1966, November, December, I got into Hubeid. Mm. The bus called Hubeid. It's, I, I posted that on, on Instagram and I got different names for what it was called <laughs> because I think it was a tender for ferrying the miners back into the mines and back into the protectorate, as yes. they were called then. And then I, 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 I marveled at him speaking Afrikaans with a bus driver mm. and smoking a cigarette. Uh, speak Afrikaans, smoke a cigarette. He's a man that I aspire to. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to Gauteng. <coughs> they gave us some castor oil to take out Lesotho food or Brooklax, I can't remember. Yes. But castor oil. They said, no, the stomach can't confuse Lesotho food with Gauteng food. Mm. And so 1967, my life starts in Gauteng. Coming to start standard three. Grade five, according mm. to today's grades. You come back and life starts. And as life starts, then you are intrigued by plays, you're intrigued by all sorts of things that are there. But there's something I want to talk to you about. In the midst of all of this, you get hurt. Somebody throws a bottle at you. Yeah. And that creates a big problem, and which ultimately led to the initial not passing the trick properly and all sorts of other things. But, yeah. you know, you get hurt. Somebody throws a bottle at you and hits you on the face. Yeah. Before I get there, let me mention that there, there was a, a, a painful thing that happens when you come from Lesotho. You're a moho. You're, you're stupid. Yes. You, you don't know how to speak like people in Gauteng. And so you are ridiculed for speaking like this moko from the Plasse. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and at school, it also happened. Jeremiah, uh, Tonki. <laughs> and, uh, and then I get to be known as Muja Tonki. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying this because for some of the people watching this, you are ridiculed for being a proper you, mm. for speaking your language as yourself, eating your food, thinking, dreaming in your language. Mm. And, and so I went through that. And, and, and thank God, in my later years now, in the 60s, I'm going back to reclaiming my language. I wish I could speak like that again. It's a problem. I can't quite do that. And, and, and I'm attracted to poets and to writers mm -hmm. and to speakers who do that, <laughs> speak the language that, like that. But in 1970, in April, I'm doing Form 1, uh, Grade 9. And during the break, Billy throws a broken bottle in my direction. Don't know why. Fate, call mm -hmm. it. And, and I happen to turn, and that bottle cuts me in my eye. And then we go to a teacher to try and get assistance. He says, no, I don't run an ambulance service. I'm a teacher here. I go home. My mother comes from work. She works at a... Uh, natural Venko, mm. uh, yeah, native store mm. at Kalfeni Station. So she she takes me to Paragonath, and then I'm admitted at uh, St. John's Eye Hospital. And they stitch the eye, uh, 
in the olden way. Mm -hmm. And which is why I have this uh, filament over mm -hmm. my eye. So since April 1970, I've seen the world with one eye. But nev that never uh, uh, deterred you from what the Lord had designed for you. <laughs> 20, 14, 15, somewhere there, mm. yeah, 20, thereabouts. Uh, somebody comes to me in Bluefontein, mm. where I found out my identity. Uh, I'm, I'm at Parkhoff, somebody says to me, excuse me, excuse me, brother. Uh, what happened to your eye? Mm -hmm. I, I tell them what happened to my eye. Wow, man. Would you mind if I pray for you? Mm -hmm. Say, no, you can't. No, you can't. You want to change me? I get into films. I get into dramas. I get in for because of my eye. It's become my brand. So if you change that, I'm going to lose the roles. I am me, and, and, and I say to people, so many people are, are volunteering to make paintings of me. I say, as long as you don't change my eye, it's okay. Mm. You gotta paint me as I am. Don't Photoshop me. But yeah, I, I have embraced my face for what it is. If someone has a problem, you know how people, they forget the entire body. Cherry man, cherry. Don't you know cherry, cherry, cherry. the one with the funny eye? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they forget everything about mm. you that becomes your description. Uh, it's their problem, not mine. You're a brain. I'm I love brain. that. Huh? You're a brain. Absolutely. You, you tell them this face it sells what they call it movies. Yeah. But then we, 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 I want to move on quite a bit into what they call the story. I told you this time ra runs very fast. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to talk about spirituality and being a man. Yeah. In the midst of all that space, mm. you actually find the Youth for Christ movement you find the, home, alive. You, the Youth Alive movement. Yeah. Um, and that's where you find a home. Yeah. And that is a bit, a big anchor point because in both ends of the story, this is a big change. And I want to talk about that in the context of, context of being a man and spirituality. And I know I can set you off where you could talk for hours about it, but... Just that moment, bring us in. Please understand that you, you must first be a man before you can be a husband, before you can be a father, before you can be a manager, and all that. Mm. You raise a boy to become a man. Too many a time, we outsource our problematic sons to somebody's daughter. It's very difficult, man. But maybe if he get married, he'd be better. He can't control his temper. He doesn't respect. He's got daddy issues. He's got social habits that are problematic. Mm -hmm. All those things. He has not grown up to be responsible and accountable. Let's, for now, just talk about those two. Mm -hmm. Responsible and mm -hmm. accountable. And, and so he's not a man. He's a big boy. And so I find faith at the age of 14, 15, and that faith grounds me. Men and women who are not blood, who are not relatives, build inside of me what it takes to become a man. 
That's why I keep saying, even in some of the books that I write, manhood is an inside job. You have to find the man inside you, and then you can do those things that confirm, not that make, that confirm that you're a man. You see, let me explain it in acting terms. That is the Gibson Kent uh, Township style kind of uh, acting, where basically you put on things. Mm -hmm. You put on outside things. You put on a face, a, an accent, a, a way of walking. Mm -hmm. a, it's, it's from outside. And as though that then gives you character. And, and there is a school of training Stanislavski and others, uh, Bunny Simon and others who were influenced to me, you must first find the raw nerve inside this person. The one that finally actually leads you to that person that you're portraying. So that when you found that, it's almost like uh, that person comes to live inside you. Then Jerry explains, be, explodes because Sizwe inside of me. So when you see me in Sizwe, Banzi is mm -hmm. dead. You, for three minutes, you, you say, ah, Jerry, I, you've forgotten about Jerry looking at Sizwe. Mm -hmm. and, and so the... The people at Youth Alive and other Christian institutions built one brick at a time, one principle, one value, one, one at a time, so that by the time I get married at the age of 24, I am ready to get married and I can be a husband. You see, I shouldn't preach too much, but you see, one of the problems we face in this world is boys who get married. Yes. When you're a boy, anything and everything that is of value becomes a problem to you. Your car is a problem because of the passengers that you put in there. Mm. The phone becomes a problem. That's why you're always putting pin codes. Your wife must not be able to have access to that phone because of the conversations and the pictures that you send and receive. Your money becomes a problem. Your house, when your wife gets pregnant, you are excited because of the things that you can do while she's away. Everything of yours points to the immaturity of a boy that you are. And so uh, that faith and the environment, and, and you see, Youth Alive is a youth organization that disciples. Mm -hmm. And what is discipleship? It is the building of character. And, and motivational speakers often speak about you see, success comes when character and opportunity meet. And then you can get success. You don't bump into success. You get character. That success is sustainable because of the character that you are. You're not a one-hit wonder, one song wonder, one club wonder, one job wonder, one, no. It is sustainable. And so I thank God for the foundation that I found, the spiritual foundation that I found at Youth Alive, Youth for Christ, Scripture Union, and other Christian organizations. There's a passage that gets quoted quite a lot in the Bible, but very few people have actually experienced that quote. The one that says, a man, some people say that finds a wife, and you don't find a wife. Mm. 
Actually, a man who's given a wife mm -hmm. finds favor in God. Yeah. You have given a wife through youth alive movement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to correct that what they call that passage because it gets repeated so many times in wed weddings and say <laughs> and marriage ceremonies says the man who finds a wife. You don't find a wife. You are given a wife. Through youth alive movement. Yeah. You see, <laughs> my history with ladies starts with uh, a girlfriend, Kofora, Kerekenyafora. How do you know that? You know, the libido, everything is running wild. I must also have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Oh, let me not mention her name. But <laughs> she's, she's my first girlfriend. And, and, and by the way, guys, be careful. The first woman that you really love disappears with a piece of your heart. Keep a good distance. Stay away. I, I've seen her a few times. And just, whoa, it's like, God, I wish you had made it work with this. <laughs> anyway, mm. I was the first one. The second one was a Christian who we had a relationship, and then she went to boarding school, and then she fell in love with her teacher, and uh, and Shaka Pakistan, you know, <laughs> the silver cup was broken. And that happens in June, July, 1970. And then I say, God, uh, you see, now, We've had enough of this. I don't want a substitute. I don't want a substitute. So help me, help me. Uh, we're going on leave. Mm. On, on leave. That, that was 69, sorry. Mm. We're going on leave. No women, no love, no nothing. Uh, August, I see Claudine. I swear. I swear. The heart just goes. Tuk, 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 the machine is broken. Yo! <laughs> and I think, no, 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 no. One, I have a contract with God. Mm. Two, there's no love at first sight. Mm. No, no, you're lying. There's no love at So, so I've got two reasons to believe that this is not it. And so I'm slamming on my brakes and I'm trying to keep sober and. Here, the more I keep trying to throw water, I'm throwing paraffin on this thing. Here, man, finally, he, he, in December 1969, I proposed her. And she said, I, I can't read, you prayed. <laughs> it's also my turn to pray. Mm. Give me time. I go to camp with young people, and then one day I call her. At hospital, you're the bure gave me a stress man too, just to make a call, to make a call, mm -hmm. you know. I, 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 I think I lied and said something emergency, and I speak with her, and she says she made a mistake. She says, "Yo, I'm missing you." <laughs> <laughs> and um, so then I, I. The 2nd of January, 1970. 2nd of January, 1970. I, I think I'm mixing years here, but I will correct them. Um, they still have she, to read the She book. says yes. <laughs> she says yes. And, and I think it was 2nd January, 69, because we got married in June, 1970. So it was 68, then 69, then 70. And uh, yeah, so I've been with this woman since 1970, June. This year, 42 years married. But didn't forget, this is, you know, you, you tell the story in a very uh, simple manner. And I know how you love your wife, and I've seen you on social media, and I've seen you publicly with her. We need to talk about this thing because this is the same woman that pushes you. One, 
to continue with getting on in threads. Yeah. And then two, supports you through the you going overseas to go and study. Yeah. And the crisis at VETS. And the crisis at VETS. And through the state theater story. Yeah. You know, you, you, you found favor. Yeah. And then we need to acknowledge. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. God was good to me. God was very, very good to me. Yeah. And that was after the crisis of you taking her pension money and burying your brother with it. <laughs> Do you need to tell people that? <laughs> I blushed the day I became aware of that. I blushed. We make mistakes. We make grievous mistakes. But the thing, I want us to have that conversation about the fact that making a mistake in a marriage. I mean, you can say there's been, you know, you tell of so many of them, uh, and you tell them candidly. But you, you, there's, you know, a lot of men cannot find their way out of or not a way out, but the acknowledging of the mistake, and then just being there. Because at times, a lot of men don't, cannot see that they've found favor in the wives that they have. And let's have a bit of a conversation. I'm giving you a chance to preach here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm blushing inside. I'm, I'm blushing inside. I've made mistakes, man. I've made mistakes. That's, that's what makes me normal. Yeah. <laughs> that's what makes me normal. That's what makes you normal. Uh, chapter 7 says, in the final analysis, I'm a man. Mm. I've lived. I've died. Died. I've loved. I've hated. I've hated yes. with a passion, feeling justified. I've been celebrated. I've been to places. Uh, I, I've filmed with both Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. I've been in the big hotels. I've been in the business class. I've been celebrated, and I've been shamed, insulted by a taxi driver when I was low, when I was... I've been honored as a man. I've been emasculated. But, and still, I live. I know who I am. I know who I'm not. I know what I am. I know what I am not. I'm a man. Uh, Maybe, maybe I should, I should turn this. I don't know if it's in it. We, 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 we journey through life. Mm. We make the worst of mistakes. But that's what makes us men. Uh, I'm trying to find this paragraph. In these pages, I have sought to lay out parts of my journey you might find instructive. Faith has seen me through it all. It wasn't easy, but it was all worth it. It was difficult, but it was possible. It remains possible. I'm not a perfect man, but maybe it's in those Maybe let, let me switch I this thing off. Uh, but maybe it's those imperfections that make me humanly perfect. I'm not an angel. After all, I'm a man. So, that walk in your own manhood. So, I've made <laughs> grievous mistakes in my life. Grievous. And God was gentle. 
with me and my wife was generous with me. Big mistakes. So my brother dies and I'm just an ordinary worker, youth worker with no pension, nothing. All I have is a metric. And so she has moved from general nursing and she resigned for a while and got her pension. And then she's going to study midwifery. And I don't have money to contribute for the burial of my brother. I take a pension money. Because you I had to be a man. I had to bury my brother. I do that. I do that. And I mean, sure, there are mistakes. Let, let me leave the people to read the book. Let leave them to read the book. I want to get on to something, and, and this is what I was leading up to. In the recipe for becoming a man, which you lay out clearly, I can actually make a spreadsheet and then uh, give it up. <laughs> Let people check whether they are, are compliant to being a man or not. There's something you speak about there. And that links back to this issue of hongachelete and use it in that manner. The point at which a man does not understand his own money. Mm -hmm. And he wants to get hold of money or make money so that he can impress other people. Mm -hmm. And also use money in his family to impress other people. Mm -hmm. Where do you think that a lot of young men get the sense from? Because we were not taught by you guys. We were not taught by the older generation. And how do we remedy this thing? It goes again to the definition of a man. Because if, if you define it by the outside things, you are desperate to move further north with your address. Mm. You are desperate to increase the engine capacity and move towards the German car, a baby V. Mm. You want to marry a woman with a name and have a license to lay any woman you want to lay at any point. Mm. You, you, and, and, and so too, men, too often, men live a lie. We live a lie. And it's not only in my industry. You see, in my industry, when you go to the premieres, to the opening nights and blah, 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 it's very important, even funerals, mm -hmm. it's very important what car you park. To the point that you'll go and rent a car that you can't afford just so that you, you, show. you show up and... and leave an image and then you get into a soapy and you know that people are written out of soapies but immediately you get a car that you can't afford and it takes 60 percent of what you bring mm. because when you are out there and and people want selfies and autographs it's important what car you drive when you go to the funeral and to any event and so there's major pressure, major, major. And until you have character to be able to define yourself outside those things, outside things, then you'll do what I've seen a lot of people, especially in the Indian and Jewish communities, that they'll drive their Toyotas and have their millions in their account. They will go to pick and pay and Woolies to go and buy their clothes instead of having a jersey that comes from somewhere overseas and costs you 5,000 rands. They, 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 their values, and, and, and unfortunately, we don't teach those things. 
We don't mentor our young in, in those areas. And, and people are too, they want easy, tenderpreneurs. One step goes wrong, they go back home in the forum house because they have not learned what investment means, what saving means. So I, I really, look, we try one young person at a time who has an ear and you talk and you talk and you try, you try. And it's amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, they, they don't want to kill me for this. <laughs> Sometimes it's kids outside their house mm. who get it better. Not our own kids. I'm not saying all of them. Mm. But sometimes it is our own kids who don't get it. And the kids outside get it. Especially those who don't have fathers who then are attracted to us as, as model fathers. Mm. And they understand it. And then it's different. So, yeah, it's true. We, I've, I've seen Kosovo uh, to the men who had the shops and the bottle stores and what have you. When the man dies, give it three to five years, it's gone. That man started on a bicycle, and eventually they got a shop, and eventually they got a baki, and eventually they had a coal yard. And then they die. Three, five years. The legacy, gone. Gone. And, 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 and it bothers me. And, and I'm, I haven't gotten it right myself. What is it that's going to be there 20 years after you pass away that says, ah, that's Jerem Fukimwamakheta's legacy? I'm hoping that some of these literature, some of the things that we teach our children, helping them to start their own companies, not in my name, in their own names. And, and hopefully, and, and, and hopefully I can leave them with my God who's able to sustain them through anything because they've seen him do it in our own life. You speak about something interesting in order to hear it. You speak about the difference between stardom and artistry. Yeah. You speak about how when you're a man who knows who you are and what you've become, mm -hmm. there isn't a need for you to be uh, into, what do they call it, into, you know, trying to show off and all sorts of other things. But that comes from mentorship. You've worked with the greats. Yeah. And the greats were kind to you because you also brought something to them. Yeah. Let's talk about the role of mentorship. I want to go to how you end up with a, 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 a double barrel surname. And, you know, the, the period and then we can move on and be able to uh, deal with how to become a man. But let's go past this point of, of, of the role of mentorship. Here's what mentorship does. Nat Ngosi is one of my mentors. He, he walks the talk. Mm. What he teaches you, you see him living it. He's the kind of man who says, La uh, Lela Games alone. appointment. You must budget for a puncture. So that in case you get a puncture, you are still on time. So, 
Ungabegi, like we would these days, you look at Uber and, and you look at the apps and they say 15 minutes mm. and then you budget 18 minutes. You can't change a tire in three minutes. And so that teaches me to keep time. Mm. Uh, people on sets and meetings and everywhere say, hey, the old man is already there. We're having a Zoom meeting. Ah, the old man has already logged on from net in course. Mm. He doesn't tell you. He lives it and tells you, explains what he is doing. He models the character, the values, all of that. He says, I, Lalela, my brother, we are going to have a motto. Who sister actually lived. If possible, have a third person in the car. Mm. And if ni hamba no babi linje, agasha le ngase mva. Anga loga paza misi sandla sako or your eye in the left seat. <laughs> it sounds stupid. It mm. sounds whatever. It sounds weak. But. Why does the Bible say if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he's already committed adultery? Mm. Because our strength is also our weakness. What we see is what causes problems for us. I've said in workshops, what is it that makes cleavage so exciting to a man? Uh, to this day, don't ask me, but men go wild when they see cleavage. Why? What you see? You go crazy. So mentorship is not just about preaching. It's about teaching and modeling. And so it goes a long way. And, and it's different from counseling mm. because counseling, you're looking at the past and so trying to make sense of the present. Mm. And coaching then is a different discipline because you're saying to a person, Muna, where do you want to go? Well, no, 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 let's, where do you want to go? What is it that you have? What is it that you don't have? What is it that you can do? What is it that you can't do? Let, let's start with you and work towards a dream, a goal, because it is possible more than you realize. Ask his, I, I, I'm, I'm into coaching. Yes. But, but that's what it's about. So mentoring is modeling and teaching. You've been adamant about artists, no matter how big they are, not showing up on set or at rehearsals, oh. drunk or with a hangover. What do you say? You said, I cannot work with an instrument that is not finely tuned. Yes. Yes. First, yes. where does that come from? But I want to talk about this culture. You know, this culture that I, I have no understanding of. I mean, when I started working, uh, Sundays were a recuperating day, and the following day I have to be the sharpest, uh, uh, what do they call it, tuned uh, tool at work. And yes. people drink until 1 o'clock in the morning. Yes. Yes. Where do we get this culture and how do we clean up this thing? Because I am finding that youngsters that are still starting out in their careers, they behave this way. That people by, are alcoholics by the time they graduate. It's sad. Sad. They will toy toy, they will bend the school if you close the bottle store. And I know there's a street in Bloemfontein that they go there, is it Thursday or Tuesday? Mm -hmm. The students are there. And, 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 and this, this freedom is a weakness to them. This liberty is a weakness to them. Now, you see, let me put it this way. Uh, we were discussing with family just around the word stewardship. Mm. Stewardship says this, you are terrible. Mm. 
and one day you're going to give an account to God for the life you have lived, including your lifestyle. You are the CEO of the life table lives. CEO. But you're not a shareholder. You're not the owner of the company. You are the caretaker of God's property. You are the CEO. Now, in this world, as a CEO, we can fire you. Unfortunately, for some people, death fires them because of their irresponsibility. Yeah? People have become successful in the arts and sports, and their success took them on a downslope in no time with drugs, with alcohol, with a lifestyle. That they drove recklessly as CEOs and the company closes. Company mm -hmm. closes. So here's the thing for me. You know, I, I, I'll give you an example of one of my principles. When we have a closing party, rap party, mm -hmm. premiere, whatever. 11 o'clock, I disappear without announcing. Why? Because when people have had one, two, three, they become brave to say and to do what they are not brave to do when they are sober. Mm. <laughs> That's simple. I'll give you an example. Ndate. Uh, you know how we, we, we become physical and we're hugging and what have yes. you? And in no time, there's a whole tongue in your mouth. And you think, no, 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 whoa. I thought, <laughs> boundaries. <laughs> All right. And, and there's a knock at your door. And you think, no, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I'm not expecting anyone at 1 a.m. So, so I've learned to be a CEO best life. So I, 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 I have zero tolerance of artists who, because of their chosen lifestyle, mm -hmm. they're going to work with me and be irresponsible and unprofessional. You see, professionalism is not negotiable. No, that thing. Professionalism I can't come here, I am dressed wrong for the camera. Not when you've told me the screen is screen. Yes. And, 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 and I must have that in mind. And then I just think, no, I've been sponsored this screen thing. No, I can't. And so I remember there's a play that I was directing and the actors came on Monday and they were babalast. Big names. Mm. I worked them over time on that day. I worked every minute until the end of the day. That was the last time they came in to me, Papa last. Now, you are COO at How Train. Okay, now this is sponsored by How Train and what have you. But imagine, there are certain men who if you look at their records, Mondays or any day after a holiday, they come to work with doctor's letters. And yet they expect you to promote them. Purely based on the number of years they have worked in the company. What value are they bringing? And then they want to give problems to people who are union leaders because now they must be protected. But their record in the company 
in uh, employee wellness, in say, no, you can't trust. They are terrible CEOs of their own lives. So, uh, you see, no one did not the bridge, bridge, <laughs> bridge. Uh, so, so if you're a man, let your record on Mondays show after holidays show at team building when when we have a conference way out there and we've left our wives at home. Let your record shows at the hotel that you're a man. Let your record show. It's not me. When I get a finger pointing, uh, I will remind them that a great man spoke about this. It, it is an important issue. And, and, and you know, it, 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 it has always baffled me from early in my career. I could never, ever understand that thing. Uh, probably because I was, the way I was raised or anything of that sort, I could never, ever understand that. Um, right up until today, I find it quite weird uh, to go to lunch and have something to drink there and then go back to the office. I have no understanding of it. I'd, I'd rather if, I'm, if somebody wants to have lunch with me and uh, you know all these things that December, then I'll t ask them, let's make it a late lunch mm -hmm. so that Haki mm -hmm. I am going back home. Yes. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. And that's my way of doing things, but mm -hmm. it's, it's whatever they call it. I mean, if we're having drinks and we're having drinks and, and that's it, that's what we're doing. But mm -hmm. it's, it can't be on a day when tomorrow uh, you show up and I'm expecting you to be a finely tuned yeah. instrument. Yeah. And now, ah, you know what, say, but you never know when I'm a band. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 I love the way you put it, Dr. Mafet. Dr. Mafet, Sergeant Cocobella. <laughs> Your views about what do they call it? About <laughs> about excellence and how you put it into the reality of it. As I said in your introduction, every time I see that picture appearing anyway, it doesn't matter where mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the reminder that he does Sergeant Coco Bella. After I watched the first episode of the line, I couldn't watch the second one. I had to, you know, it was more the, what do they call it? It was the youngsters uh, call it FOMO, the fear of missing yeah. out. Yeah. That I went back and watched the rest of the series. <laughs> you explain, you, you, you embody the, what do they call it? Sergeant the Kukubela, character. The character and all. My fate. Yes. My fate. Twice. nonsense. My fate. But you have a way of embodying excellence. There's nothing you've touched that you haven't done to the best of your abilities. And it, it, it's something we need to teach. It's not something that just comes. But you also need to tell people about what comes before the excellence shows up. Combine youth alive with vets. Yes. Vets University and Columbia University about the disciplines, the tools of the trade. How do you portray evil characters on the screen convincingly? I'll, 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 give, you, I'll give you one example and I don't have enough time to, to illustrate this, but maybe I'll just a little bit. You know, if you want to really show the extremes in a performance, extreme anger, uh, complete, when you're traumatized, mm. you've just heard your mother is dead, uh, you're drunk, one of the tricks is this. Mm. You play the opposite. Okay. <laughs> now, you take somebody who hasn't been trained and say, no, give me, give me the opposite of that. No, 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 no. I know, I know. You, you, you've just heard about your mother. Don't cry. Don't cry. Give me the opposite. Give me. 
So, so in Sizwe Banzi's dead, I am so drunk, I'm about to piss on mm. myself. And, and the trick is, every drunk person pretends they are sober. Oh. So, please pretend to you are sober. Then you will be more drunk because you're trying to say, you know, I'm not drunk. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not drunk. Yes. And, and, and so, in, in, in university, I had to play a very cruel father to a woman who has killed her son. It's a Greek play. Mm. I can't remember what it's called, the Bekai or something. Mm. And, and I must take the, boy, the, the boy's head and show it to her. But she's almost like a sangoma. She's in a trance. Mm. And, and I force her to see her son's head. That exercise always oh, stretched me. Mm. The Christian me and the polite me. I could... And I finally cracked it when I had to become my fete, when I be, especially when I to become Doma mm. in the life. Yes. And kill like it's the best thing in the world. And finally, when I had to do Nomocheti in Skanda. Mm. So, my fate and daddy, you see those seven years in Lesotho, mm. the language then came in handy. They brought in Tate Silas Munyazi to be the our language coach for too. language. He, he, poor, poor. He <laughs> and so I had, I owned my fate. Mm. I owned Doma. I owned Naomi And that's what makes it exciting. I owned Morris in uh, Tzotzi. Mm. And, and, and here's the thing. Challenge actors. Mm. I mustn't see you thrice and see you the same way. Mm. See yes, you the there's same a way. wide range of, of roles that you've taken on. What makes you a legend? It's the breath of the things that you do, the differences, and then the depth, the quality of each one of those. So you are a victim in Zodzi. You. You are the funny people in Mama Jack, and then you, you, you are a killer in the... That variety and that depth mm -hmm. is what makes you an actor. Otherwise, you're like a, a musician who produces one album and they're finished. This is an important conversation, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. A lot of youngsters rock up. They have a very in-depth knowledge of one thing. Yeah. And but they demand now to become leaders. <laughs> now you've just said it's the variety of things that you can do, and you you could have just even read that out of a, 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 an HR or a leadership book, mm -hmm. it would be as exact as it's supposed to be. But that understanding is not there. See, everybody lives this McDonald's life. You know, I'll take a beggar, a side order of fries, and a BMW to go. But we'll drive through one. Nobody wants to put in the, the, the actual work that has to be done. Um, two things quickly. Yes. 
<laughs> There's ever been quickly between me and you. <laughs> if you're a leader mm. in your DNA, in your character, you don't demand leadership, the people will demand you to lead. I hope you hear what I'm saying. I do really. You don't demand, you don't fight for leadership, you don't bribe for leadership. The people will demand that you lead if you are a leader. Because they know you will take them where they can never take themselves. You've got what it takes. Two, you know, was it David Beckham? You see, there are these soccer players Outside the hours when the team is exercising and doing skills and doing psychological whatever, they go to the ground with two, three helpers. Mm. It's Ronaldo. They just do the corner kick. Mm. They <laughs> he perfects the corner kick so that when he kicks that ball, the entire body knows the language of a corner kick. He's not demanding to be in the A team. He is preparing himself for him to be justifiable in the A team. That's what it takes. I remember one pastor. I'm working on something with, with, <laughs> should I say? <laughs> I'm in a council of some organization. Mm. I must come to how train too, but I'm on a council. Mm. And then I'm supposed to work on something serious. And then I wake up at 4 a.m. And I work on it. And about 4.30, I send it. Ten minutes later, this legal colleague sends an answer. Mm. 20 to 5, mm. he sends Enough. an answer. Yeah. And, and, and you see, people who are leaders, mm. you'll see by what time they are on the freeway. Mm. They do not complain about traffic. They beat the traffic. Mm. So the CEOs and the COOs and the CFOs, the CCCs, mm. those are the people who are not woken up by the clock. They wake themselves up. They do what they are not asked to do because they got to be ahead of themselves mm -hmm. and everybody that they are leading. They are reading. I, Jake White, mm -hmm. when he was leading the Bafana Bafana, uh, no, 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 the, 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 the Boke mm -hmm. in England, when they won the World Cup, mm -hmm. they interviewing him and then he talks about his coach, his mentor. Mm -hmm. He says, no, no, when we've done the semifinals, I went to, to, to my coach and I said, look, hey amen, how, how do I get this team? Uh, they won that semifinals. He goes, mm. the coach of the bucket at the World Cup had a coach talking to him. Mm. But if you think you've arrived, then you listen to nobody. You don't read books. You don't go to seminars and workshops. You don't s enroll for another course mm. because you think you've arrived. So I, I wish that those people who demand to be leaders could go into what does it take mm. to be a leader, including small characters like honesty, like keeping time, like forgiving, mm. 
Let's leave it there. We'll do a leadership course. We'll do a leadership course, Dr. Demacheta. And, and to me, one of the things that we also have to have a conversation about, and we want to talk about forgiving and all of those things. You are 58, and now you're in the free state. Yeah. A woman walks up to you and says, you are my brother. My father is your father. Whew. Whew. And you stand there and you say, in the normal Dr. Jeremy uh, uh, Jeremu Fugan, you say, you are my sister. Mm. Which would have been the, the normal, polite, and what do they call it? And Munamusutu uh, responds in that way. There is no other way of responding when somebody says, you are my brother. Yes. But beyond being a, 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 a Christian who believes in certain values, every woman that walks up to you and says, you are my brother, mm. they are also your sister. Mm -hmm. But you keep on repeating it. Mm. That becomes a revelation of note. It's not even the final chapter of the Bible. It's a revelation of note. <laughs> Sure. 10 December 2014, I cried that night. Mm. I cried. You almost wish, I wish I had the camera on so that it records. I cried. I'd been looking for my identity. I'd been asking about who's my father. I'd been praying about it. And an answer came through a stranger in a very unexpected place. And I found out that I am Mahita's son. Mm. And then the journey started. Very difficult journey. I, I say in the book, one of the things is when, when you talk about illegitimacy, mm. that word is problematic. It's an insult. Mm. Uh, I'm not a mistake. I mentioned Jeremiah chapter 1 when we started here. Mm. And then the whole discussion about it's a fault. Mm. And, and then there are issues between families Hey, Mona, do you take responsibility? And then the mothers, mm -hmm. the mother, no, 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 not my son. No, father, say, where were you? Where were you when your son laid this woman? Mm -hmm. and, and how many men in their 60s, 70s, and they're afraid to go and apologize? And I hope two men out of this broadcast, mm. take the courage and, and they can write to me if they want. I, I, I'm already working with so many people mm. to say that I want to apologize to my child. I, I denied them. Too many people walking around with daddy issues in that mm. type. Daddy issues. We hate men because we hate our fathers and we hate ourselves. We have, have warped masculinity and, and we have a, an unforgiveness and an anger. Anger that is, yeah, it's like Litoba. Mm -hmm. And anyway, back to, I found out that I'm a Khetas son and told my wife and then we told Khaizedi, the daughter to Dade Macheta's mm. elder brother and one step at a time until eventually after being roasted my mother said no it's true he is Macheta's son yo I wish, yeah, I 
wish I could thank her again for that. I, I gave her a copy of my book, and I said, I wrote there, thank you, you gave birth to me twice because of that. So I found out at the age of 58, and I prayed to God, this broadcast, the book, and other conversations help some, somebody out there to find out before long, hopefully in their youth. And in the living years. And in their living years. Because one girl in central western Jabal mm. got a note from her late mother to say, look, I couldn't tell you in my lifetime, but rightfully, here's who you are. Here's who your father is. I can't remember if he was still alive. At least, then she knew, but Mama was late. She couldn't say it in her lifetime. It's a difficult conversation for us to have. I know. And we hold culture as being the barrier and a lot of other things that sit there. As an excuse also. Yes, as an excuse also. Oh. But. You give us a recipe in the book. And we're not going to give everything of it. We, 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 we give parts of it out. But you yourself had found yourself now as a father having to deal with what they call it, with raising a child who, you know, despite everything. And as you say, sometimes you have the pain of saying, do I have the right to speak about this? having a son like mine. But the most important thing that you raise in the book is that until the man is willing to live the life you desire for them, mm -hmm. there isn't much you can do for them. Yeah. Now, that's a difficult conversation that they might have. Yeah. Because it, it, it's, it's not as simple as that. We, our children are our children, and we always want to help. Yeah. How are you doing with that? I was in New York at school. We went to church, Calvary Baptist Church, uh, which is diagonal opposite to Carnegie Hall. I think it's 59th Street between Broadway and Fifth Avenue. And there was a pastor there, yeah. Rose. And he preached about David yeah. and Absalom. Absalom, rebel. Mm. Absalom. You can't, you couldn't say David and Absalom in the same sentence, mm. who wanted a coup against his own father. Talk about Samson. Mm. I want you to go and get me, marry me, a woman from the other nation. Haman. Are there no women here? Don't you know God? I want her, he says. And he gets her. And he didn't even spend one night with her. He donated her to his best man. <laughs> the very night. Mm. But the hard-headedness of youth prodigal son. Mm. Those are three quick examples. So, for more than 15 years, Claudine, my wife, and I have to deal with a son on drugs. Mm. The money disappears. The phones disappear. 
a television set, technology, blah, 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 blah. Whatever that could be sold. Eventually, I remember he took a wet shirt from a washing line. <laughs> you know, when you love something, it's like, watch it, I'm going to wear it. Mm. And it's gone. Things have disappeared. We paid money. I, I, I couldn't explain it sufficiently. Yeah. Relapse after relapse. That young man has died, literally. Died. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm not speaking figuratively here. Yeah. He's taken overdose. Mm. He's been beaten up. He's, he's got nine lives. And with a brain like he is. Genius. He's not going to die. He's never going to die until God is done with him and mm. until he is within God's will. So, here and there, people must understand, mm. even the best of men and women have Absaloms and uh, prodigal sons and Samsons. Pastor Rose said, you cannot and you should not take responsibility for your children's adult choices. You cannot and you should not take responsibility. You see, sometimes as parents, we struggle to let go. Mm. You want to baby someone until they are 50 and you die and leave us with a baby because you can't let go. And so sometimes you leave them to life. Life teach them. At this point, I must say, things are looking good. I must say that, to set the record straight. Yes. At this point, things are looking good. And he has told us that God has a calling on his life that he's been trying to run away from. Some people need his kind of testimony so that they can minister to that kind of people. Because to him, it's not a story, it's not fiction. Mm -hmm. It's a journey that he has walked. And so I, I look forward to sit in an auditorium where he is ministering in my lifetime. I don't want that to happen after I'm gone. If he's going to be, uh, what's the right word? He's ordained. He's, I'd like to be there at his ordination mm -hmm. and, and, and say, you know, a few years back, I would have said, impossible. Look at God. Dr. Market, I want to go back to the book because I want you to read the opening paragraph in the book. The one that talks about reading. <laughs> <laughs> and because men most South Africa but in the whiskey, but to go to Gonga, I have nothing against that kind of a life. But we go back to those people demanding leadership when there's no content. Yeah. The men must have content. A man cannot speak about that. Me, I can't suffer fools. Uh, that's a lot of people that know me know that. Yeah. You cannot speak about something that you know very little about and act as if you are the best at it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this thing. As we gather here, we're gathering here to try and get people to read. I guarantee you probably a lot of people we gave this book to 
a year back still hasn't haven't what do they call it opened it up arguing about men that read and African men that read you see reading doesn't necessarily bring you instant millions mm. but it's that break by break by break of character of values of a different way of thinking I I train directors now, directing is not something that you have Google there or you have books. You are alone in the rehearsal room. Mm. And, and what that's about when you train a director, you teach them to find their own signature. They must learn to see differently, to hear differently, to think differently, and to do teaching them alone to be directors inside themselves. Reading. You see, even if you disagree with the author, mm -hmm. at least you know what it is that you disagree with. Then you can affirm what it is that you believe in or agree with. But you sit and read nothing. What are you saying? You're not growing. You, you're just a junkie of hip hop music and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and social media. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So. You, you know, Dr. Mahatha, I see a story come up. And I see very educated men, well, in the sense of uh, the paperwork is in order, hagger, hagger, where's the degrees and all of that. Certificated. Yes, yeah, certificated men, let's call them that. But the weakness of analysis, it's just, un, you know, you, you pick it up. Yeah. And you talk about social media, they see something on social media and suddenly that is the truth. That's gospel. I am struggling with that because that's a lack of content. And I've had numerous uh, uh, others sit here and I, I, I argued with them and said, our current uh, education system might not be from 1976, but it's not teaching people to think in a structured manner. <laughs> Just before we <laughs> See, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Mm. Wisdom is applied and tested knowledge. And it's what the Bible calls precept upon precept. You're not going to be a disciple of one author and you haven't tested their opinions against other authors. There's only one Bible. But even that Bible, the verse is the same. The application differs from country to country, from culture to culture, from year to year. From context to context. Yes. Absolutely. And that's for us believers, that's the only inerrant word. But read other people's books. You can't make theater and you don't go theater. You can't want to write a book and you don't read books. You can't want to speak to life and nobody speaks to you. Yeah. I don't want to be <laughs> controversial, but... Let's... Be controversial. Boo and the No. 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 No, no. Let me ask just one more question then that and, and as we look forward to what we're going to I did say to you the two hours will disappear quite quickly. It's gone. We're left with three minutes. But I'm not uh, fettering you, as the lawyers would say. 
some, it has been written here, what advice would you give to young men? And I know that's not a subject that we can start now, but if you were to take the, the beautiful passage that you, you read just now that closes the book, to me, sums it up. But in your own words, if you were, it, it, they, those are your words, but if you were to be able to sum up this advice to young men on various things, on excellence, on leadership, on showing up, being a tool that is useful, on being a man, on, on, uh, you know, on mentorship, on everything else, what would be that one thing you would place there and say, here's a nugget of gold, but if you want more, read I'm a man. Be teachable. Solomon prayed and asked God for wisdom. Mm. Be teachable. Be hungry mm. for knowledge and wisdom. And go on that search. Read books. Search internet. Go to seminars and workshops. Watch films, documentaries that are about that particular subject that you're interested in. Find a mentor, not a drinking buddy, a mentor. <laughs> Somebody, you know, the Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a friend than the kisses of an enemy. Find a mentor who will wound you when necessary. Mm -hmm. To say that's nonsense, Belaiti. That, that's nonsense. Go, go and apologize to your wife. Go apologize to your wife. Skaba Batla lawyer. Go and apologize. Mm -hmm. That's it. So it, it's back to the basics of character. Find those things that will build character in you. Not fame, not empty success, character. Let me leave it there. Dr. Makata, with those words, all that's left for me is first to pay the bills. We would like to thank the publishers for making you not only available, but you yourself taking the time to be here would like to thank the team that puts this together every time. Every time it's a roving success, I know that a king is only as good as his advisors. They give me the script, I break it every time, but I also follow parts of it. I am eternally grateful to everybody, the team in knowledge management, the team in marketing that puts this up on social media every time, and the team that stands behind us all, the team at GMA, and everybody else who work with us. Beyond everything else. I, I hope I'll be allowed to give a phone number so that people don't bother you. They know who to call <laughs> when they want to track me. Because yes. I refuse to give my number. I'll be a receptionist. No, that is fine. So we'll, we will do exactly that and, and, and manage that on, 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 on your behalf. Um, beyond everything else, I'd like you to thank you for candidly telling a story, for candidly bringing forward what lies beyond the brand. Because there's something that lies beyond the brand. Yeah. But telling it in such a, I think Kipadil Hulal says, he's, uh, he tells it in the most harrowing but candid manner. But letting the scars be opened so that we can all learn from them. Yeah. That is a story that everybody should read. To everybody else, thank you for listening out there. And let's thank collectively Dr. Jerry Mufuking Wamacheta. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much for hosting me. That is it. Thank you.